Just in terms of the importance of that international business, right now intact, fully North American, Canada, U.S., uh, why this urge to go global? What does it bring to you? Well, I think that uh, the first thing that this brings to us, Amanda, is that our uh, position in Canada will be strengthened by 30% uh, in attractive product and distribution mixes. So that's very important for us to be strong on the home front. The second thing that this brings to the North American specialty lines platform, Amanda, is that we'll get 30% bigger in specialty lines, which is an attractive segment of the property and casualty insurance and add international capabilities to serve our customers you know, wherever they, they operate within North America as well as Europe. Uh, in the context of the transaction, to make this happen, we also chose to acquire the uh, UK and international, but primarily UK and Ireland platform, where RSA has a strong leadership position in a highly competitive uh, market that compares with Canada. And so given they have leadership position, given they have scale, we think that we can leverage some of our core competencies where we turn scale into an advantage in the UK market. And the environment is good to do so. But Charles, as part of that, you also seem to be picking up the pension obligations. How do you navigate that challenge? Well, the pension obligation is uh, fully reflected in the economics of the transaction, where you see that uh, our uh, profit per share will be up uh, upper single digit in the first year upper teens within three years, and the return on the transaction again bakes in the pension obligations and will be north of 15 percent. We've agreed with the pension trustees to support the commitment that RSC uh, has done and continue the commitment that RSC has done to uh, fund the pension plan going forward. So fully reflected in the risk-reward mm -hmm. equation and the economics of the deal. Mm. Where does your view, your longer-term view about interest rates and where they go from here factor into the timing of this, if at all, Charles? You know, Amanda, we're builders. We have long-term perspective in mind, and the environment in the near to midterm, whether it's interest rates, whether it is the pandemic, whether it is Brexit, does not really have a big impact on the long-term economics uh, of the transaction. We uh, uh, have short-term products, they're 12 months products, and we reprice as the macroeconomic environment changes, interest rate uh, included. And so we're comfortable operating in this environment and, and comfortable operating in an environment where rates go up. Not a big driver of the decision we've made. What about uh, so-called synergies, Charles? Does it mean that people will lose their jobs? You know, we have... Um, uh, shared with the market that uh, we expect $250 million of synergy, three quarters of which will come from the integration in uh, Canada, and 20% uh, from abroad and 5% in specialty lines. Vani, we have a long track record of integration in Canada. We've done that uh, many times. That's why we think economics and the risk associated with the transaction work, and those synergies are not only people synergies, they're actually technology synergies, they're actually supply chain synergies, uh, tax, risk management, and so on. In aggregate, we think that the job losses here uh, will be approximately 2% of the combined workforce over time. That being said, you know, Intact is a growing organization. Part of our uh, integration process consists in insourcing services so I think job losses is really not a, a, a big part of that story. You know, the insurance industry, especially PNC, uh, is facing some stiff headwinds in recent years. Um, and obviously, extreme weather would be, I think, top of the list, certainly for some regions and some companies. How does the pandemic play in for you? Uh, I imagine in some ways there have been benefits and savings, if I can put it that way, uh, lower claims, and in other ways, much higher claims. How does it shake out? Yeah, I think the pandemic, broadly speaking, for the industry is a, uh, a massive uh, event uh, that is historic in nature. I mean, it is clearly a big, big uh, challenge for society, and, and therefore it is a big, big challenge for our industry 
I would say that the cost of the pandemic in commercial lines through liability claims, uh, event cancellation claims, and so on, has been uh, staggering. But, you know, a big portion of these costs, at least in the case of Intact, we've accounted for in the first part of the year. When it comes to uh, the fact that there is less driving, a lot of relief has been provided to, to consumers on that front. So I would say, in aggregate, Intact as a firm has had you know, strong performance, as we've seen in Q3, but really a function of the fact that we came into the crisis in a position of strength. Otherwise, it is very challenging for the industry and, uh, and certainly very challenging for society. So what will be the plans once this is integrated? I mean, will you be looking out for more bolt-on type acquisitions or will that be it for the foreseeable future, Charles? Bonnie, I mean, our first focus will be a strong integration where customer service, employee engagement and performance are at the forefront of how we determine success. Uh, in terms of capital deployment, we still want to continue to build our domestic position in Canada. We want to deploy capital in specialty lines, which is now an international platform once we close this transaction. And, uh, and then we'll want to strengthen our position in the UK once we see that uh, we can outperform in that marketplace. So the capital deployment story is very much consistent with where we're coming from. There's no plan to plant flags. That's not the business we're in. We're in the business of building great customer service and outperforming our competitors doing so, and we'll stick to that.